And last week we started to talk about time and seasons and that God worked with time and seasons. And we read from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. And I'll just read some other translations so that we can add some flavor to that verse of scripture. Like the contemporary English version says, everything on earth has its own time. Everything on earth has its own time. Everything on earth has its own time. So which means timing is absolutely important in what, what we do. It's good to work hard. It's good to do the things that we do. Absolutely, we should be doing those. But timing becomes the deciding factor. Timing becomes the deciding factor. That God will create opportunity for us to encounter the right time. Make move in the right time. Do things in the right time. And that is absolutely important today. So the question that I started to ask myself after last week's uh, Bible study was how do I know the timing of God in my life? How? How do I know that it is the right time? How do I know? And so this is what we will try to examine tonight. I'd like to set the stage from the book of John chapter 5. Book of John chapter 5. From verse 1. It said, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. A feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. That's what scripture said. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the ship market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks blind, hot, wilderness, waiting, waiting for the moving of the water. All of these people, great multitude, waiting for their time. Waiting for their time. Again, the question is, how do I know that it is my time? How? Now, when you look at your watch right now, you can say to yourself what the time is, the time of the day is, wherever you are across the globe. You can say what the time of the day is by looking at your watch and you know the time of the day. My question to you, do you know the time of your own life? Do you know what time it is in your own life? What time zone are you in your life? What time is it in your life? Your lifetime, your lifetime is different from the chronological order of time. It's different from your time zone. My lifetime is different from East, Eastern Standard Time or East Coast Time. My lifetime and your lifetime, depending on where you're at, is different from the time zone where you live. So one o'clock where you live may not be one o'clock lifetime. So I need to figure out with 
God where I'm at in my lifetime. Because that's very critical. Everything boils down to timing. So you have this so multitude of people, blind, hurt, wounded, paralyzed, waiting for an appointed time. For in verse 4, it says, For an angel, an angel, obviously from the Lord, went down at a certain season. Not every time. Another translation says it went down at a certain time. Remember, last week we talked about Cronus and Kairos being two of the Greek word that expresses time. And that Kairos is a defined moment in Cronus. It's a defined moment in Cronus. And so in this verse of scripture, there is a defined moment that the angel comes down from heaven to stir up the water. So that is key. There are a lot of people around the pool, but at a certain time, the angel of the Lord comes to trouble the water. Trouble the water. Trouble there means stir up the water. So the water doesn't just stir up by itself. It takes a supernatural force to stir it up. And it happens at a certain time. A certain moment in their lifetime. Let's continue. And in verse 5, a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. Verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had not he had been now there for a long time, in that case, in his situation, in his condition. He asked him this question, Will thou be made whole? And in verse 7, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is stirred to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Why does another step before him? Because the other who stepped before him understand or understood the timing of the stirring of the water. So the reason that this man stayed in the same condition for 38 years was because he lacked the perception of timing in his own lifetime. So he was not able to get in the water. But the water was stirred, stirred up at seven defined moments in time. So how does any of those people know that it was about time that the angel of the Lord would come in and stir up the water? That's a question that we'd like to try to figure out today. Now, when you look at the story that we just read, you discover that it's not about doing right or doing wrong. It's about right timing. So the man being there for 38 years was not because he did something wrong or did something right. It was because he missed the time. So when I miss my time, I may find myself being in the same place for a long time. 38 years is a very long time to be in a place. 38 years 
is a very, very long time to be in the same place. But he was there for that length of time. Was he ready for it? That's a question. Was he ready for his miracle? Was he, was he ready for his time? That's one question. But the other question, was his time ready for him? Is your time ready for you? And are you ready for your time? Now, if your time would have come right now, are you ready? And if you're ready, is it your time? So those are questions that you need to try to understand as we, as we endeavor to understand God's time. The Bible says that he made his act known to the children of Israel, but he made his way known to Moses. One key here is that if you know the ways of God, you might just be able to predict the time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you miss that time, you may not recover that time again. But set God restore to you the years that the canker worms have stolen, the years that the northern armies have eaten, except God restore those things. You might find yourself sitting by the pool for 38 years. You may have the right solution and you may have it at the wrong time. And you may have the right solution and you may have it at the right time. So the confluence of factors Sometimes is a decision, is the determinant of success in life. Success is about timing. Success in life is largely dependent on time. The preparation is good. The preparation by itself does not only, only underline the word only. Does not only determine time, I mean, determine success. You see, a lot of people who are successful in their field, it wasn't so much as their preparation, but largely as to their timing. They found themselves in the right place at the right time. They found themselves when the time was right and the time was right. Now, if you're a business person, you're trying to set up your business and you are blessed to invent something or a product that people need at a particular time, then you're, you find yourself being successful. You find yourself being successful. There was technology that was relevant five years ago when it was made. It was made at the right time. And everybody ran to it. If you were to bring that technology of five years ago to today, nobody cares about it. Because even though it's good, then the timing is not right. It was right timing five years ago, but not today. So you can have it that it will be good for nothing. So success at right timing, they are brothers and sisters. You can, you can have the best education that you have in life. And a simple encounter at the right moment on a plane, on a train, at a bus station can change your life. Wish if that encounter never happened because you were not there, you missed the time. You will have to wait because that time is gone. So success is about time, the right 
times it's about timing when the stars all line up for you. So people who are successful in life, they've accomplished a lot in life, the season and the timing was right for them. So therefore, you need to know, and I need to know, your own season and your own time because your time is going to come. And your time and my time is different. Each of us. We are not on the same lifetime. No. Each of us are on different lifetime and on, on different life zone. We may be of the same age, but our lifetime will be different. So I cannot follow you. I cannot follow your ways. I shouldn't be imitating you. I shouldn't be doing what you're doing. I need to stay with God to figure out what I need to be doing at this moment. That's why last week we talked about the songs of Israel who understood the time. They knew what Israel should be doing. So two active words they understood the time. They understood the time. They understood the time. And then they knew what should be done at that time. So it's one thing to understand the time. It's another thing to know what to do. So which means I may be sensitive enough in the spirit to know that my season is here. The water is about being stirred. But the other part of it, do I know what to do? That I'm supposed to step in first so that I'll be made whole. So there are Christians who have an idea that their moment is coming, but unfortunately don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. So when that moment comes, they're not able to maximize the moment. So it's important that we know our season. You know when to hold on. You know when to fold up. You know when to sow. You know when to reap. And somebody who understands God, you are never anxious about the time that you are in, your lifetime. You are never anxious about it. Because you know that a season come, a season go, a season come, a season go. Take farming for instance. You know that this is sowing season. You sow. But you're forward looking. The harvest season is going to come. So in between sowing and harvest, you are not anxious. Because you understand that that is the process of life. And you know what to do. When Reaping or harvest time come, you harvest your product. You're not anxious between harvest and the next sowing time because you understand the timing and you know what to do. So Christians who don't understand the ways of God, like Moses, they only know the act of God and they are Christians like that. All, they, all they, they're familiar with is the act of God. God is a miracle worker. Thank God for that. Yes, he is. God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, he will. But other than that, do you know the ways of God? Have I taken time to try to search out God's ways of operating? And when I, when I find the time to do that, I am less anxious about tomorrow. I am less anxious about the day after. I am less anxious about next year because I understand the timing and the seasons. The timing and the season. You know the Bible says we'll be like a tree that is planted by the side of the water that brings forth fruit in its season. In its season. There's a season to bring forth fruit. If you're not in that season to bring forth fruit, 
fruit is not going to come. But if I miss that season to bring forth fruit, then I miss my breakthrough. So I need to be sensitive enough to understand that there is seed time and harvest time. That's what the Lord said. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time, there will be harvest time. Seed time. Seed time. Harvest time. It's all tied to time. 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 The man by the side of the pool that we just talked about, his problem was understanding timing and knowing what to do. That was his problem. The set time, said the Bible said time is come for the Lord to have mercy on Zion. Yea, he said time is come. The set time, like I said last week, is a Kairos moment. That is our opportune time. God will always create an opportune time for his children. Why? Because he regulates time. He's outside of time. He manages time. He regulates time. He will always create that opportune time. That's his to do. He'll set, set it up. God will set up the environment. God will set up the condition. All these things work together for the good of them that love God and of those who are called according to his purpose. God will set up the environment for success. Then it's up to me to bring myself to that place where God has set up. There are a lot of things that God does that gives us a strategic advantage because he set up the condition. He set up the moment. He set up the environment. And it's up to you and me to take advantage of that setup. Now, I can never fully take advantage of God's opportune time if my preparation time has not happened. The, the worst thing in life is that God brings this opportunity but I'm not ready for it. The worst thing, the worst place that a person will never be, will ever be is that the timing shows up but I'm not ready to get into it. Now, the man that was by the pool 38 years his travesty was that each time the, the water was filled up he was not ready that's why when Jesus asked him oh, what's up he said well I got no man to put me in before I would get there somebody else already got in he was not ready and why aren't we ready sometimes? Because we're comfortable with the moment. A good farmer, in summer time, he's getting ready for harvest time. In harvest time, he's getting ready for sowing time. Yes. The moment he puts the seed on the ground and he's doing the work, he's putting his bonds together. This is where I'm going to store my harvest. Where I'm going to store them, this is how I'm going to store them. It's making contact with the buyers. This is how much I'm going to sell to you. Signing the contracts. He's getting ready for sowing. He's getting ready for harvest time. Even though he's on sowing time. When he gets to harvest time, he's getting ready for sowing. He's putting together the seeds that will go into the pipeline for sowing. He's getting ready. He cannot afford to be caught on the waves. So the readiness 
for that time that will come is absolutely important to our success and fulfill our destiny. I can say that the fulfillment of destiny is partly God and partly you, partly me. God will set up the times. It's up to me to take advantage of it and maximize those moments. If I cannot, then it's, it's on me. God opened the door. He allows you to step in and then you mess up. That has nothing to do with God. It has a lot to do with you. When preparation meets opportunity, that's your Kairos moment. After you have prepared, say for instance, you went to college, you graduated, you, you got your, your degree, you went to do your certification, you passed your certification. Now you're a certified person. The Lord creates an encounter for you to meet somebody who is in that field, who wants to hire you, give you high pay, and they ask you, do you have your degree? Yes. Do you have your certification? Yes. You present it, the door open. Now, if you're on the flip side, you go to college, you, don't, you get a degree, but you're not prepared enough, you fail the certification, the opportunity comes, where's your degree? I got it. Where's your certification? I don't got it. You don't get a job. You, I cannot blame God for that. Was my lack of preparation to get myself situated that when the opportunity comes, when my Kairos moment comes, I'm ready to get right in and get my opportunity. God does that. God does that. God controls systems. There's no system in this world that God cannot control. God can promote somebody so that a position will be open for you. But the question is, are you prepared to do the work in that new position? You know, sometimes we ask for breakthrough and say, God, I need you. I need, I need uh, uh, upward mobility. I, God, I need a new level. God, I need this. But the question is, are we prepared when those times and moments happen? Sad to say, a lot of us are not prepared. So the preparation part is absolutely key. And that's what we should be doing while we're waiting for our season. Prayer is good, but I want to tell you, I love to pray. Prayer is not everything. Prayer is part of it. You walk and pray. You walk and pray. You walk hard. You pray hard. That's what Christians do. But religion taught us that, oh yeah, you, all you need to do is fast and pray and everything's going to happen. Lay hand, confess it, do this. No, it's more than that. You got to put in the work too. We talked about Paul last week, how Paul put in the work, even though he prayed, even though he fasted, even though he wrote half the New Testament. Jesus did the same thing, said, I must work the work of my Father while it is day, for night cometh when no man can work. Jesus did his work, even though he's God in person, in person form. So we're deluded by a religion that tells you, oh, Christians are just going to be millionaires. They're going to be blessed without doing nothing. Who does that? No, you have to put in the work. You prepare yourself. You put in the moment, waiting for your time, waiting for your time with great anticipation that my time is coming. I'm walking towards it. I know it's going to come. I'm walking towards it. That's what it means by waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean just sit there and wait. No. Waiting on the Lord is the concept of a waiter in the restaurant. You're constantly doing something. While you're waiting for your teeth to be given to you. If you did nothing, you don't get a teeth. So this is, this is the concept here. And preparation plus opportunity is what really gives us the success that we need. So what should we be doing now? Number one, pray to know the time. You are in, you're in an attitude of spiritual sensitivity. Every moment. I know it's hard, it's easy to say, 
but as best as you can. Be sensitive in the spirit because that's how you know. You can scan the spiritual atmosphere around you to know whether something is about to break through. Like you see the cloud in the sky, you know it's about to rain. You can look at the spiritual sky, you see the cloud, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, my time is almost here. Then I need to be prepared. And, and number two is preparation. Praying, number one. And praying doesn't just mean saying the Lord's Prayer and, and, and buying and losing, those things are good. Praying is the type of prayer that brings me to a level of spirituality where I understand what's going on in the spirit realm around me. That's what I'm talking about. It's being spiritual. Spiritual to understand what's here happening. And then number two is preparation. Putting in the work that is needed. If after scanning the atmosphere and you start to feel that God is about to create some type of opportunity, what do you do? Start to zero in on your skill set so that when that opportunity is presented, you're ready for it. And then number three is plan. Planning. We, we plan to fail when we fail to plan. It's planning. Christians, Christian people, sometimes we feel, well, you don't have to plan. God's going to do it for you. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong. We have a role to play in the program of God for our lives. If we play those roles properly and we match with God's move and understand our lifetime and be able to read it, then we'll be in a better place. So what am I talking about today? The question is, what is the time in your own life? What is your lifetime? What is it? Is it one o'clock? Is it two o'clock? Is your lifetime right now at your beginning of, the, of your life or at the middle of your life or at the ending of your life? And this has nothing to do with chronological order. You can, be, you can be 33 and a half years old like Jesus. His time was complete. At 33, he was close to the ending of his lifetime. At 30, he was right at the prime of his lifetime and his work just began. But before then, we didn't read so much about him. But he knew how his own lifetime was going to be like. So do I know? And the only one that knows is the manufacturer, our creator. He's the only one that knows. And he is to whom we must always go and say, God, what is next? The year is about to be halfway. Something would have to happen on the seventh month. What is it? And the Lord start to minister to you. Build the ark. Build the ark. And then you start to build the ark. Even though the time has not come, but you heard that rain is coming. The flood is coming. And then you start to build the ark. And the people around you, because they're not on your own lifetime, they don't understand why you're building the ark and you're building it on dry desert. But you know exactly what the Lord said to you. And you're preparing. And you're planning. So that when that opportune time show up, you're ready. That's what we're talking about tonight. And I hope you got something from this. We'll continue next week by the grace of God.